Welcome to the Pennsylvania Judicial Center in Harrisburg. I'm Andy Hoover, Legislative Director for the ACLU of Pennsylvania, and I'm here with our big star of the day, Vic Volchek, our legal director. Uh, today is day one of the voter ID trial here before the Commonwealth Court, and Vic uh, led the team today in questioning a number of our witnesses and providing our opening statements. And Vic, just your general sense of how things went today. We thought it was a good day. I think what's what's really important is that we've been hearing from the Commonwealth for months that we need this law because uh, there's this problem with in-person voter fraud as uh, folks in the courtroom and the judge heard from David Gersh who gave the opening statement, lawyer from Arnold and Porter, and they've been tremendous, tremendous law firm um, in providing assistance in this case. Um, the, the Commonwealth has signed a piece of paper admitting that not only is there not a single instance of in-person voter fraud prosecution, they're not aware of a single reported instance, whether prosecuted or not. So there ain't no fraud. Um, so that's on one side of the scale, but what's I think particularly significant and I thought was really quite moving is that the court today heard from six individuals, some of them are petitioners, others are, are witnesses, but these are all individuals who as the law stands right now would not be allowed to vote. Some of these folks like Viviette Applewhite uh, has been voting since the 1940s. Uh, her first vote was for Roosevelt. She testified that she's voted in every presidential election but one, and the one that she didn't vote in, it's because they moved the polling place and she spent all day trying to find the polling place and couldn't find it, so she, she didn't vote. Um, so this would truly be the first presidential election uh, since, uh, I guess it would have been Roosevelt's last term, uh, that she would not be able to vote. Uh, and you heard from a number of other individuals, and these are all people who no one would question that they are entitled to vote, and yet they would not be allowed to do so because they don't have a piece of paper that the Commonwealth deems necessary. And the bottom line is there's no justification for that requirement. And on that issue, you talked with Ms. Applewhite about the fact that she did get a birth certificate in May, uh, just less than two weeks after we filed our lawsuit, uh, coincidentally or not. Um, but you didn't go into this with her, but you talked with our expert witness today, Veronica, from Face to Face in Germantown, Philadelphia, about why that birth certificate was not enough for Ms. Applewhite. Can you explain that? Yes. In, in, in fact, to get a PennDOT ID, whether it's a driver's license or photo, non-driver ID, um, you essentially need four documents. You need a Social Security card, you need a raised seal birth certificate, and you need two proofs of residency. The most difficult of those to get is the raised seal birth certificate. Um, Ms. Applewhite had been trying for years on her own to get that birth certificate. She was unable to do so. She eventually went to a lawyer at Face to Face, which is a wonderful social service agency um, in Germantown, um, and they managed to get the birth certificate for her. And people have been asking, uh, oh, well, now she could vote. And well, a birth certificate does not equal photo ID because the problem she has is that her birth certificate is in her maiden name, which is Viviette Brooks. Her social security card is in the name she uses now, which is Viviette Applewhite. And that change occurred not through marriage, but because in fact she was adopted as an adult in Mississippi. So in order for her to get that PennDOT ID, she not only now needs the birth certificate and the social security card, she needs legal papers showing how she got from Brooks to Applewhite, which face-to-face -face has testified they don't have the resources to try to track that down. So she's still a long way from being able to get that PennDOT ID. A couple of legal questions uh, to wrap this up. One was in the Commonwealth's opening statements, they made references to the legislature and the courts deferring to the legislature. Uh, one comment was that statutes should be presumed constitutional. You're on our legal team, I'm on our legislative team, and what do you make of that? I mean, shouldn't the courts have some oversight and, and some constitutional interpretation? Well, they do, and, and generally there's a lot of language in, in court opinion saying that courts should defer to legislative decisions, uh, but it's very clear that there is a hierarchy of laws. There are those laws passed by uh, legislatures such as the General Assembly. Um, and then there's the Constitution. There's actually two constitutions, a U.S. Constitution and a Pennsylvania Constitution. We have filed this under the Pennsylvania Constitution. And if the judge finds that there is any conflict between this new voter ID law passed by the legislature and the Pennsylvania Constitution, it's his obligation to declare the law unconstitutional. The last question is about what the team, our team, is seeking exactly. It's a preliminary injunction. And what does that mean? How could that play out? 
Yeah, it's and and been getting a, that question from a lot of people, and unfortunately, it is not perfectly clear. Um, sometimes a preliminary injunction just means that you do it again after you get the tentative ruling. Sometimes it's the end of the the road, um, and the losing party concedes. We don't know what's going to happen. What's most important is that the relief we've asked for is that whether the judge declares the law unconstitutional at this time or not, we're asking that he issue an injunction blocking enforcement of the ID requirement during the election in November. Um, and I think this really is crucial. Uh, based on the numbers that we've gotten from the Commonwealth about the number of people who don't have IDs, tomorrow the court will hear from one of our experts who has conducted one of these you know, fancy surveys that you see about you know, voter attitudes or other attitudes. We've actually commissioned one of Pennsylvania voters. He's going to testify about that. His testimony is that there's probably about a million people million eligible voters in Pennsylvania who don't have a valid form of ID. And so if this law is not overturned, in fact, then I'm convinced there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people um, who have every right to vote, whose vote will not be counted in November. Well, Vic, thanks. This from the gallery, it looked like a good first day. Uh, yeah, we're, get, we're get some good. rest. Yeah, <laughs> good. Thanks. All right, thanks, Vic. Take okay. care. Uh, that's it from here in Harrisburg. Tomorrow, the trial uh, goes on here in Applewhite versus Commonwealth. We'll have updates for you uh, both by video, uh, by our blog, and, of course, on Twitter as well. So check us out in all those places. We'll be back with more tomorrow.